this video we're going to talk about the binomial theorem. So first let's make clear what, a, what we mean by a binomial. A binomial has two terms that can be added or subtracted together, but not three terms because that would be a trinomial and not one term because that would be a monomial. And something like say 2x plus x is not really considered a binomial because you could just add that together and then it would be a monomial. So we're talking about two terms. Those are binomials. Now what we're going to do is look at different powers of these binomials. What happens when we take two terms and raise it to the zero power, to the first power, to the second power, and so on. In particular, we're going to start by looking at the coefficients when we expand these. Now, uh, if you take anything to the zero power, that's going to be just one. When you take x plus y to the first, you just get x plus y. And so what we mean by the coefficients is 1 is the coefficient of x plus y to the 0, and the coefficients for x plus y are 1 and 1. When we multiply out this x plus y squared, remember we've done this before, the shortcut is first one squared twice the product plus second one squared, because we'll get a 1x squared, and a xy and another xy will be 2xy, and then the y times y will be y to the second. So the coefficients, which is what we're trying to draw our attention to here, are the 1, 2, and the 1. Now, when we take x plus y to the third, what that means is x plus y times x plus y times another x plus y. So we multiply our binomial times itself three times. So we've already seen that when we multiply two of them out, we get our x squared plus 2xy plus y squared. So if we multiply by yet another x plus y, making x plus y to the third, we're going to get, as we distribute that x, we'll get x cubed plus 2x squared y plus xy squared. And then when we come back with the y, we'll get an x squared y, and then plus a 2xy squared, and then plus a y to the third. So combining like terms, we're going to get x to the third plus 3x squared y plus 3xy squared plus y cubed. And again, the coefficients are 1, 3, 3, and 1. <clears throat> so mathematicians in the past were really very interested in all kinds of polynomials, and in particular in powers of binomials. So Pascal, Blaise Pascal, was a French mathematician, I think it was in the 1600s, maybe 1700s. He looked at these and looking just at the coefficients that I had put there in blue, he noticed a pattern. And so when he wrote those as a triangle, he saw that they go 1, 1, 1. So from x plus y to the 0, you just get that 1. From x plus y to the first, you get a 1 and a 1, 1x one and 1y. One from the x plus y to the second, it goes 1, 2, 1. And when we get x plus y to the third, it goes 1, 3, 3, 1. So what he noticed, I mean, there's patterns all over the place here. But remember, we are going to call this first one, we're going to call row 0 because it comes from x plus y to the 0 power. And then the next row is row 1, and this is row 2, and this is row 3, and so on. Now, what Pascal noted is you can generate the next row. So if we wanted row 4, what we do is we always begin and end with a 1. And then when you get in the gap between the two numbers in the row above and add them together, that will give you the next number in the next row. Do you see how I'm getting these numbers? So in the gap between 1 and 3, we add them and get 4. In the gap between 3 and 3, we add them and get 6, and so on. So what happens is 
This, remember, is coming from row four. So this gives us a way of writing out x plus y to the fourth. We know the coefficients are going to be 1, 4, 6, 4, and 1. When we look at the powers of x and y, we can see, now remember this was the expansion for x plus y to the third. We started with an x to the third and y to the zero. Then we got an x squared y to the first, and then an x to the first y to the second, and then an x to the zero y to the third. So we go down in powers of x, up in powers of y. The exponents for any term always add up to be that power in our expansion. That's a lot that I'm throwing out to you at once there. So the idea is if we can figure out these coefficients, we've got it because we know we're going to start with an x to the fourth and a y to the zero, and then we're going to go down in x, so that's going to be x to the third, up in y, so that's going to be y to the first, noting that those exponents are always going to add to be four. Then we'll go plus, and then we're going to go down in x, making that an x to the second. Up in y makes that a y to the second. Notice those exponents add to be 4. We will go again down in x, up in y, and note the exponents add to be 4. And down in x means there's no more x's, it's x to the 0. And up in y makes that y to the 4th. So see if you can do it. Let's see if we can do our uh, row 5, and then see if we can do our expansion for x plus y to the fifth using those coefficients. So remember, you're going to start with a 1. You're going to get in the gap and add those together. Get in the gap, add those together. Get in the gap, add those together. Get in the gap, add those together, and end with a 1. So that means our expansion, I'm going to move this over a little bit, is going to be a 1x to the fifth, no y's, plus a 5x to the fourth, y to the first. Notice the exponents are all adding to be 5, plus 10x to the third, y to the second, plus 10x to the second, y to the third, plus 5 x to the first, y to the fourth, and finally a 1, y to the fifth. Kind of cool? Okay, now that's one way we're going to be able to expand these binomials is using what's known as Pascal's triangle. We're going to learn another way. So if you want to practice, you can do those. Maybe let's do, uh, I guess we should probably do what happens when we have a negative. So we'll think of that as being x plus a negative y to the fourth. So using our uh, Pascal's triangle to get the coefficients from row zero, we see that they're going to be 1, 4, 6, 4, 1. So that's going to be 1x to the fourth, and then you're going to get a plus 4, but then we're going to get an x to the third and a negative y to the first. I'm going to come back and simplify that in a moment. Then we're going to get a 6, x to the second, and a negative y to the second. And then we're going to get a 4, x to the first, and a negative y to the third. And then we're going to get a 1, and we'll get an x to the 0, and a negative y to the fourth. So when we simplify that, what happens with this negative sign is we're just going to alternate signs. So we are going to get our x to the fourth. The negative from the negative y to the first will come out and join the 4, the coefficient 4, and make that a minus 4x to the third y. On the term that's squared, the negative gets squared out, so it's back to being positive causing this alternating in the signs and the coefficients. And then we'll get an x squared, y squared. When we have an odd power of that negative, it's going to be negative again. So we'll get a minus 4xy to the third, 
and then we'll finish with a plus y to the fourth. So notice that when we have that negative term, it's going to cause an alternating in the signs. A positive, negative, positive, negative, positive. Okay, let's take a look at this two, this x plus 2 to the third. Now our Pascal's triangle is going to go 1, 3, 3, 1. So that's going to be 1 x to the third. We're going to get a coefficient of 3. We're going to get an x to the second. And we're going to get a negative 2 to the first because it's acting like our y. And then we're going to get a 3 for the coefficient. We now have an x to the first. And now our y is being played by negative 2 squared. And then a coefficient of 1. We have no more x's. It's x to the 0. And we're going to get a negative 2 to the 3rd. So we clean this up and we get an x to the 3rd. Now the negative 2 to the 1st is going to combine with that 3 and give us a coefficient of minus 6x to the 2nd. The negative 2 squared is positive 4 times the 3 will make that a plus 12x. The negative 2 cubed is going to be a negative 8, and that's going to be our last term, and that's our expansion. Now, we can also get coefficients from both the x and the y terms, that is the first term and the second term. Now remember, our binomial coefficients go 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, and they're going to also join these powers of 2x and 3. So we're going to get a 1 from the coefficient, that's this coefficient. We're going to get a 2x to the 4th, and our 3 is going to be to the 0 power, so it's not going to contribute anything. Then we're going to get a coefficient of 4, a power of 2x to the 3rd, and a power of 3 to the 1st. Noticing our exponents are going to add to be 4, just like what we had on the original. We're going to get a binomial coefficient of 6. We're going to get a power of 2x to the second. And now we're up to a power of 3 to the second. And then we're going to get our binomial coefficient of 4, a power of 2x to the first, and a power of 3 to the third. And finally, we'll get our coefficient of 1. We'll get our 2x to the zero power. So that's not going to contribute anything, and a 3 to the 4th. So simplifying this, we're going to get uh, 2 to the 3rd is 8. We've got our coefficient of 4 and our power, I'm sorry, back up. The 2 is going to get taken to the 4th, so that's 2 to the 4th is 16x to the 4th. Now we have our 4 times 8 is 32. 32 times 3 is 72x to the third. We're going to get a 6, we're going to get a 2 squared, and we're going to get a 3 squared. So, I don't know the best way to do this. 3 squared is 9, times 6 is 36, 36 times 4 is going to be 120, and 24 is 144. So that's 144x to the second. We're going to get a 4, a 2, and a 3 cubed is 27. So that's going to be 8 times 27. 8 times 20 is 160. 8 times 7 is 56. And 160 and 56 is, I think, a 216x to the first. And 3 to the fourth is 81. And there is our expansion. Okay. Now, we're going to take what seems like a di diversion, but we're going to come back and tie this in to our binomial coefficients in a moment here. So there's going to be another way of generating these binomial coefficients besides Pascal's triangle. Now, factorials are these where we take a number and we put in an exclamation mark. So in math, that means 3 times 2 times 1. So 3 factorial would be 6. Now these get big in a hurry. 
So 5 factorial is going to be 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. So let's see, that's 5 times 4 is 20, 2 times 3 is 6, 6 times 20 makes that 120, so that's getting big in a hurry. Now it seems weird, but 1 factorial is just 1, that's not very weird, but by definition, 0 factorial is also 1. So 1 factorial and 0 factorial are both 1. And there's not a great explanation why, except that we're going to need it to in a moment when we talk about some of these uh, formulas. Now, a factorial is only defined for positive, or I should say non-negative integers. So there is no negative factorial, there is no fraction factorial, only integer factorials. Now, these, fa these simplify really nicely. So if we have something like, say, 8 factorial, over 6 factorial. If we think about writing this out, it's 8 times 7 times 6 times 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. Big breath. 6 factorial is 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Well, these are all being multiplied, so we can cancel like crazy. And so what we see is that all that survives is that 8 times 7, which is 56. Or another way of writing this is we could say our 8 factorial over 6 factorial. We could start writing out the bigger factorial until we get to the, to the smaller factorial. And then 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 is just another factorial. So those are going to cancel and you'll see we get our 56. So similarly, if we had something like 10 factorial over 7 factorial, we could say that's going to be 10 times 9 times 8 times 7 factorial, which we could then just cancel those factorials. 9 times 8 is 72. 72 times 10 is 720. Now we will also see things like we might see something like, say, uh, 8 factorial over 3 factorial, 5 factorial. So we'll, when we see something like this, which we will shortly, we will expand the biggest factorial until we get to the second biggest factorial. That is, we'll go 8 times 7 times 6 times 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 is 5 factorial. That will allow us to cancel that bigger factorial. The smaller factorial we can go ahead and write out, and then it's going to find something to cancel there. So we can see that the 3 times 2 times 1 is 6, and we're back to our old friend 8 times 7 is 56. Okay, now one place where you see factorials a great deal is with what are called permutations and combinations. So permutations are denoted as NPR. Hmm, that's also a really good radio station. And combinations are known as, or written as NCR, combinations of N things taken R at a time. And we will also see the combinations sometimes written using this notation, which kind of looks like a fraction, only there's no actual fraction bar. So what we mean by NPR is it's the number of things we take and we pick R of them where order matters. So that is defined to be N factorial over N minus R factorial. So for example, if we had something like five, the permutations of five things taken two at a time, we would write that as five factorial over 5 minus 2 factorial. And that we could simplify to be 5 factorial over 5 minus 2 is 3 factorial. And then we could simplify that like we talked about. We'll go 5 times 4 times 3 to 1 is 3 factorial. We can cancel our 3 factorials and see that, that 5 the permutations of five things taken two at a time is 20. Now, there's lots of reasons and context to do that in, 
but we're just focused actually today on the combinations because that's what we're going to use when we do uh, the binomial expansion, the binomial theorem. Now, NCR, the combinations of n things taken r at a time, is defined to be n factorial over n minus r factorial times r factorial. So that, in the case like we just saw, of the combinations of five things taken two at a time, is going to be 5 factorial over 5 minus 2 factorial times 2 factorial. That is 5 factorial over 3 factorial, 2 factorial. So we can, again, like we talked about, we'll expand the biggest factorial until we get to the second biggest one. So we'll go 5 times 4 times 3, 2, 1 is 3 factorial. That will allow us to cancel those factorials. 2 factorial will expand out is just 2 times 1. That's just 2, which will cancel with 4, and we'll get 10. So this notation, the n things taken r at a time, is just another way of writing this. So it, too, means n factorial over n minus r factorial r factorial. And I don't know why. You see it, you see this notation, the NCR, in almost all the applications I can think of, except when you see binomial theorem, in which case you usually see that notation. I'm not really sure why that is. I've just observed that. So let's see how this comes into play. So, if we recall, Pascal's triangle, row 3, goes 1, 3, 3, 1. Now, the claim is, or my claim is going to be, we can generate these numbers, these binomial coefficients, if we choose the n. So, if we look at our expansion, this is coming from x plus y to the third. If we choose the n to be that 3, and we choose the bottom number, what we've called r, to be whatever our power of either x or y is. Let me give you an example. So remember, this is coming from 1x to the third plus 3x squared y plus 3xy to the second plus 1y to the third. So my claim is that we can generate these coefficients by using either 3 choose 0 matching the coefficient matching where the 3 matches our original power that third power of our expansion and the bottom number is going to match the exponent on either x or y so we could choose 3 choose 0 3 choose 1 will get us that term 3 choose 2 will get us that term, and 3 choose 3 will get us that coefficient. Or we could also have matched it with the other power, that is the power of x. Instead of 3 choose 0, we could have gone 3 choose 3. Instead of 3 choose 1, we could have gone 3 choose 2, where now I'm matching the 2 with the power of x. And the 3 choose 1, we could write 3 choose, or 3 choose 2 could be 3 choose 1, and we could do this 3 choose 0. These will be the same numbers. So we can see that. I'm going to do the green ones, and you can try the red ones if you like. So 3 choose 0 means 3 factorial over 3 minus 0 factorial times 0 factorial. So this formula is why we define. 0 factorial to be 1, because we don't want to get a 0 in the denominator. So this is going to be 3 factorial over 3 factorial, 0 factorial. Well, those are going to cancel and be 1. 0 factorial is 1, so that is 1, which is exactly our coefficient of that first term. 3 choose, what did I say, 1 is going to be 3 factorial over 3 minus 1 factorial, 1 factorial. 
that's 3 factorial over 2 factorial, 1 factorial. So remember, 3 factorial is 3 times 2 times 1, and that will cancel with our 2 factorial. 1 factorial is 1, so that's going to give us 3, which matches our coefficient. Looking at 3, choose 2. That's going to be 3 factorial over 3 minus 2 factorial, 2 factorial. That's going to be 3 times 2 factorial over 1 factorial, 2 factorial, which also is going to be 3, which matches that coefficient. And the 3 choose 3 is going to be 3 factorial over 3 minus 3 factorial, 3 factorial. That's 3 factorial over 0 factorial, 3 factorial, which is also 1, and so it gives us those coefficients. Okay, so what are the implications of this? So that means if we want to expand 3x minus 2y to the fourth, uh, we can do this. I'm going to write it out, and then we're going to grab our calculator to do these because these numbers are going to get big. So we are going to take our coefficient is going to be 4, choose, and then you can match either the power of x or the power of y. I'm just going to match the power of x. 4, choose 4, 3x to the 4th, and a negative 2y to the 0. That's going to be our first term. I'm going to come back with my calculator here shortly and simplify that. Plus... We're going to go the coefficient, what we call a binomial coefficient, is going to be 4, choose 3. We're going to get a power of 3x that's going down from the 4 to 3. We're going to get a power of negative 2y that's going up from 0 to 1. Then we're going to get 4, choose 2, and then we'll go down in powers of x. So that's going to be 3x squared and a negative 2y now to the second. Our coefficient next is going to be 4, choose 1, and that will be now 3x to the first, and a negative 2y to the third, and then we're going to get a 4, choose 0 for the binomial coefficient, 3x to the 0, and a negative 2y to the fourth. Okay, I'm going to go grab my calculator. You can do the same. Okay, now the 4 choose 4. This we can go to, this is the same thing as 4C4. So and this is just going to be 1. Anything choose itself as 1. But let's just see it on our calculator. So we're going to type in 4 on your calculator. Then hit the math button. And then right arrow to... Uh, let's see, where do we want to go? I think we want to go to the probability column. And then down there, option uh, three is NCR. Hit enter. And it put the four right where it, we want to put it. And then it's asking you for the next number, the R number. So if you type in four there and hit enter, you're going to see that that's going to be one. Now we're going to get 3 to the 4th, which you can use your calculator if you want. I just happen to know that's 81, and anything to the 0 is 1. So that's going to make our first coefficient, 1 times 81 times 1, is going to be 81. And we're going to have a power of x to the 4th and no y. Okay, now we're going to do the 4c3. So remember, we're going to go 4 on our calculator, go math, arrow over to the probability, down to NCR, enter, plug in 3, and when you hit enter, that's going to be 4. So that part's going to be 4, and then 3 to the third is 27, and that's going to be times a negative 2. So when you multiply that, 4 times 27 times the negative 2, you're going to get a negative 50. And we're down to, now we're going to get a power of x. That's going to be x to the third. And we have a power of y to the first. See how this is working? Now we're going to go 4c2, combinations of four things taken two at a time. So 4, math, 
right arrow to probability, down to NCR, put in 2, and that's going to be 6. So we're going to get 6 times 3 to the second is 9, negative 2 squared is 4, and that's going to be 24 times 9, which is going to be 216. So that's a plus 216. Now we have x to the second and y to the second. Now for c1, we can do that to get 4. And then 3 to the first is 3. And a negative 2 cubed is going to be negative 8. So that's going to be 12 times negative 8. And that's going to be a, whoops, I didn't do that right. 12 times a negative 8, and that's going to be a negative 96. And now we're to x to the first, y to the third. And finally, force to 0 is going to be 1, 3 to the 0 is 1, negative 2 to the fourth is 16. So our last term is going to be plus 16y to the fourth. Okay, so that's how we can use the combinations and that probability and the factorials to generate the coefficients for a binomial. Now this gives us also this idea of how we're using these combinations to kind of target a particular term instead of having to write out the entire uh, Pascal's triangle. So now remember the fifth term, this is a little bit, um, this can be a little deceiving. Remember our first term, we are going to start with, uh, we're going to have an x to the seventh and a y to the zero. And so we, that is going to be, if we want to think of it as our binomial coefficient is going to be seven, choose zero. So when we have a zero there, that's our first term. The second term is going to have a one. The third term will have a bottom number of two, that r value of two. So the since this is the one, two, third term, our fifth term is going to have a binomial coefficient of seven, choose four. See how that works? Now we're going to have a power of x that's going to match that fifth term because our, or if you want, let's we can do it either way. Let's do maybe this had a y term of zero. The next one's going to have a y term of one, and the third term will have a y squared. So our fifth term is going to have a y term of four, and our x term is going to have to be whatever power will make this add to be 7. So that's going to get us uh, 3. See how I'm doing that? So the top number here in our n choose r, the n is going to match, let me change colors, this is going to be our n, and our power, uh, our the r value here is going to, we're going to have to be careful because our first term is zero. So if we want the fifth term, that's going to be one smaller number. Okay, now we can evaluate this using our calculator because we're going to go seven, choose four. So I'm going to do that on my calculator. Seven, math, arrow to probability, down to NCR, put in the four, and that's going to be 35. So that's going to be 35. And we're going to get a 5 to the third, which you can do on your calculator. Or if you know that that's 125, you can just go to that as well. And our negative 3 to the fourth, you can put on your calculator. Or I happen to know it's 81. At any rate, we're going to get our coefficient. I'm going to go 35 times 125 times the 81. This is going to be a big number. Is 354,375. Our power of x is going to be x to the third. And our power of y 
is going to be y to the fourth. That is our fifth term in the expansion of 5x minus 3y to the seventh. Okay, let's do one more. So now it's only asking us for the coefficient a. So we don't really care about the power of x and the power of y, but we kind of kind of have to think about what that's going to be. So see if we can do this. We're going to go our n choose r for our binomial coefficient is going to be 10 choose, and we can match one of these powers of either x or y. So we can either use 10 choose 4, or we can ten, use 10 choose 6. Those will give us the same number, so you can't really go wrong. We're going to get a 3x to the 4th and a 2y to the 6th, because they're going to match our powers. So if all we want is the coefficient a, we don't care about the powers of x and y. We're going to do our 10 choose 4 times 3 to the 4th times 2 to the 6th. So I'm going to put it in just like that. 10 math over to probability and hit. Oh, sorry, I did that wrong. Let me clear that off. I'm going to go 10 math over to probability down to NCR and then put in the 4. Then I'm going to go right arrow so I can get up on the same level. I'm going to go times and then I'm going to write 3 to the 4th. So 3 raised to the 4th arrow out of the exponent. I'm going to go times 2 raised to the 6th and hit enter. And I'm looking at 1,088,640. These numbers get big in a hurry. Kind of cool? All right, very good.